Good morning. Good morning. Ah, it is so good to be back here. It is so good that Unity of Lawrence is my last stop on the way to California. I'm relocating to Southern California in a couple of weeks. So I thank you so much for inviting me to speak, uh, to share what is on my heart, to, for us to, in a sense, have a conversation about gardening. <laughs> but it's gardening from a me metaphorical standpoint, okay? So how does your garden grow? You know, some gardens are filled, if I can, okay, I'm still working on this. Some gardens are filled with beautiful, fragrant, fragrant, colorful flowers, while others are filled with more practical vegetables. But you know what? Both gardens require, what, planting? Food. Food, yes. The end result, care and maintenance. And even before that, they require selection. Selecting the right seeds. Selecting the right vision for your garden so that you can have that ultimate beauty and that ultimate end use, especially in the case of your vegetable garden. Well, your life garden, your life garden requires planting, care, maintenance. Your life garden requires selection. Your life garden requires the selecting from the divine ideas that you get from your thought sphere. So planting the seeds, the idea seeds into the soil of your consciousness and subconsciousness also then requires cultivating those seeds into whatever it is that you have envisioned as your garden's ultimate purpose and beauty. And so this process of growth and development is both intentional and oftentimes unintentional, right? It is that from a spiritual perspective, it is that from a physical, mental, and emotional perspective. And so this is why it is so important that we be mindful of what seeds we are planting, what seeds we are selecting and nurturing and cultivating. And so what are you thinking? What are you believing? And what are you expressing in your daily actions? Our Unity co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore, once said this, life is a school. In the beginning, God created man in his own image and likeness, even as he created the little seed to bring forth of its kind. As lives the flower in the seed, so lives Christ in me. As lives the flower in the seed, so lives Christ in you, in each and every one of us. And so the Christ, the divine, lives in you. Our true beauty and essence resides within each of us, and it is our task to nurture it, to support its full expression. Each of us is a gardener of our lives. 
and how we tend our gardens matter. What we plant in our gardens matter. What we cultivate in our gardens matter. You know, we often hold in awe the beauty of gardens that are well tended, that are just amazingly well manicured. But guess what? Those well tended, well manicured, beautiful gardens require tons of hours of work, right? One of the joys in my life, every week, and there are, I know a few people here who would uh, be witness to this, is my going to the Arboretum and Botanical Gardens in Overland Park. I started doing that a number of years ago. And then a couple of years ago, when I had hip replacement surgery, I used it as a way to continue the healing process. Gardens, the beauty, the nurturing, the essence of what it is God has created in this world are absolutely healing for us. And we are part of this glorious garden. The Christ lives in each of us. And as we tend to our potential, as we tend to our potential spiritually, physically, and mentally, our beauty will be made manifest in our lives. And so tending to your inherent beauty includes spending time, spending time with those who can support us, who can expand our understanding of the universe, as well as those who support us regardless. In unity, we are blessed that we honor and support a diversity of views and expressions of God, and we are still challenged to expand our acceptance of others. The politics of exclusion that seems to be permeating our country and our world have done much to plant damaging seeds of inequality, impoverishment, and violence. However, just as one must weed their physical gardens, we must also weed out that which does not serve the flourishing of human life. It is important that we weed out all that does not honor and promote the dignity of all of humanity. And so in this context, how is your garden growing? Think about it. You are, each of us is, a divine gardener. And as divine gardeners, we are equipped to do what is required because we are love, we have courage, we have strength, we have wisdom to discern what needs to be done and then do it. just as each variety of plant has a unique purpose. Each of us has a unique purpose as well. Now plants don't examine their purpose, I don't think. 
But each of us has the responsibility to examine our lives, to examine our purpose. As human beings, it is important that we discern what needs weeding out and what needs cultivating. As gardeners, it is part of our task to do this each and every day. We must weed out what is poisonous and does not promote our well-being. We must weed out that which stunts our growth and the growth of others. Because as gardeners, it is our task to ensure that the flowers we are tending, including ourselves, last as long as they possibly can, express their beauty as long as they possibly can. I like the poet Joyce Rupp. Some of you may have read her. And this is what she says in one of her poems. Flowers last a long, long time if they have what they need. Why is it that I neglect myself? I need to feed on beauty. Walk more often under starlight. Listen to the wind and rest my weariness. Then my flowers will last a long, long time. And so, my friends, when we see or hear something that harms one of us, as gardeners, we cannot allow it to continue to grow. We must weed it out. As gardeners, that is our responsibility. Yet there are times as good gardeners when our efforts are only acknowledged and appreciated when we are no longer in the physical. I came across the following poem just a couple of days ago. A boyhood friend of my son is a teacher in the Boston area. And he posted this particular poem. He writes many poems. He posted this particular poem and I indicated to him, you know, I am going to share this poem because it speaks to what I will be talking about on Sunday. And the title of this poem is, A Small Needful Fact. Is that Eric Garner worked for some time for the Parks and Rec Horticultural Department, which means Perhaps that with his very large hands, perhaps in all likelihood, he put gently into the earth some plants which most likely, some of them in all likelihood, continue to grow, continue to do what such plants do, like house and feed small and necessary creatures, like being pleasant to touch and smell, like converting sunlight into food, like making it easier for us to breathe. every day. We have the opportunity and the task to do our work as gardeners. The beauty and abundance of our lives and our planet depend on it. And so in honor 
of all master and minor gardeners who have planted seeds, cultivated and nurtured life promoting words and actions, and weeded out policies and practices that stifle the well-being of humanity, we speak their names into this sacred space. We acknowledge them and we appreciate them. Charles Fillmore, Myrtle Fillmore, James Dillett Freeman, Johnny Coleman, Jesus Christ, Coretta Scott King, Martin Luther King Jr., Billie Jean King, Serena Williams, Althea Gibson, Arthur Ashe, Fannie Lou Hamer, John Lewis, Langston Hughes, James Baldwin, Eleanor Roosevelt, Barack Obama, Jimmy Carter, Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Confucius, the Buddha, you, you, you are a master gardener of your life. It is your task to seed to plant, to care for, to nurture, to cultivate, and then to weed out anything that does not promote the growth of, of our beloved humanity. Each of us as gardeners have that responsibility for ourselves, for our children, for our grandchildren, so that we can have the kind of environment, the kind of humanity, the kind of relationships that support us all. And so I invite you now to affirm with me, how does my garden grow? It grows from divine love, courage, strength, and wisdom that I am. Together, how does my garden grow? It grows from divine love, courage, strength, and wisdom that I am. And so it is, and so we let it be. Thank you.